Good morning, everybody. I'm Rebecca Brigham. I hope you are well. Um, it's this beautiful fall day in Chapel Hill today. Um, we're here today to um, tell you about an exciting field placement option in Sydney, Australia um, that will start in the summer of 2020. And I thought what I would do is just record my walking through the PowerPoint presentation. Of course, if you have any questions um, at the end, I'm uh, happy to make an appointment with you or um, have you give me a ring and I can tell you more about the program. So um, last summer, a number of us here at the school were invited to go to Australia to meet with the School of Social Work there to um, think about what a partnership might look like between their school and our school. And so we traveled to Australian Catholic University, which is what ACU stands for, and met with their social work discipline faculty and talked about the possibility of setting up a student exchange. And what that means is that each year, um, two students from UNC Chapel Hill School of Social Work will travel to Sydney, Australia to complete their field placements, and two students from Australian Catholic University will travel to Chapel Hill to complete both of their field placements. And um, what you'll be completing there actually is your specialization year field placement, which is Social Work 820 and 821, which is about 632 hours of field education. And also, when you all would be in Sydney, you would be attending a bi-weekly field seminar with Australian students who are completing their field placements there. Um, you'd participate in that summit seminar every other week, and that would count as your field hours. How a student exchange works is that you would pay the same tuition and fees that you would as if you were here. You do not pay the Australian University uh, tuition and fees. And the approximate time frame, and I'll go over this in more detail in a little bit, is that you would arrive in Sydney, Australia in late July and remain in Sydney through early December. So we really consider this to be a block placement option. Field placements there are four days a week, um, which include attending a field seminar every other week. So uh, I didn't know much about Australia before I left um, and have gotten the great opportunity to travel there twice. But this is the map of the country of Australia. Much of the country, um, the inland part of the country is desert. And Sydney actually is in the state of New South Wales. There are seven states in Australia. And Sydney is here um, on the East Coast. And if you'd like to know a little bit about Sydney, there are so many things that I could tell you about it. If we were to meet one-on-one, -on -one, it is one of the most beautiful cities in the world, in my opinion, um, having had the opportunity to go there. But Sydney is, as I've already shown you, it's on the coast. There are more than 100 beaches there. Sydney, the city of us, of Sydney is actually double the size of New York City. And if you think about how big New York City is, then double that and you've got Sydney with a population of a little more than 5 million people. So here is Sydney again, right um, on the coast. Um, Sydney is absolutely beautiful. Um, it sits, the city of Sydney sort of surrounds a variety of harbors that eventually take you out um, to the ocean. Um, and I won't read this quote to you here, but it really is um, one of the greatest and most beautiful cities in the world. Of course, this is the um, Sydney Opera House here. This is the famous Sydney Bridge that you can actually climb over. Um, and this is, of course, some of the downtown um, area in Sydney. So that's a little bit about Australia, very little bit, and a little bit about Sydney, Australia. Um, and now I want to tell you a little bit about Australian Catholic University, which is our partner university um, in Australia. 
So um, ACU is ranked one of the top 3% of universities worldwide. Even though it's called Australian Catholic University, that's really a reference more to its history. It actually in 1991 became a public university. Um, there are seven campuses all over Australia. One is in Canberra, one is in Brisbane. Um, there's a number. Um, the, the particular campus that we're working with is in Sydney, Australia. Um, they also have a campus in Rome, I think, which is really interesting. And there's the Australian students travel to Rome. There's about 32,000 students um, total um, at the university. And of course, they offer match, bachelor, master, and doctoral. So the social work program is actually on a campus called Strathfield Campus. This is a picture. You can see um, the statue here of the Virgin Mary, which is a, a nod to their Catholic roots. Um, it is actually in North, located in North uh, Sydney, about 14 kilometers west of downtown. And this is actually the campus where the BSW and MSW uh, programs are located. It is the campus that you would travel to for your field seminar experience. So what would this look like for you if you were to participate in the program? What ha would happen is, is you would be required whether you're direct practice or macro practice, to take a course in the first summer session here at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, if you are a direct practice specialization student, you would take Social Work 840, Adult Mental Health. And if you are a macro practice student, you would take Social Work 874, Administration and Management. Then for the fall semester, what you would do is you would register for Social Work 820 and 821, 12 credits for the fall 2020. And then you would duly register at ACU for their course, Social Work 631, Field Practicum 2. Um, they count credits a little bit differently than, I, than we do here at this school. Um, but so basically what happens is you're registering here for the fall, you're paying here tuition and fees, and then um, we would set this up so you would also register for courses there and you're actually a duly enrolled student at UNC and at ACU. So you would complete a block placement in Sydney, Australia, and then for the spring semester, you would return to Chapel Hill and complete your coursework. Of course, courses here at the school are offered on Mondays and Tuesdays, so you would be loading up pretty significantly on Mondays and Tuesdays for your courses. And then you wouldn't be in field on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, so you could use that time to possibly take um, courses in other departments here on campus or at some of our interinstitutional relationships such as Duke or NC State. Um, and or you could be working or you could be job searching, whatever you wanted to do on those Wednesdays or Thursdays. And then the plan would be that you would graduate on time with your class. Okay, so I want to tell you a little bit about the field placement options. I've had the good fortune of visiting um, all of these agencies when I was there, and I feel very confident that all of them can provide a strong field placement for students. Uh, the first one is St. Vincent's Hospital, which was founded a long time ago, 1857. You can see that because we're partnering with a Catholic university, many of the agencies that they work with are also historically connected to the Catholic Church. Um, so St. Vincent's Hospital is one of the oldest hospitals in Sydney and it's a full service acute teaching hospital serving adult patients. They do not have um, pediatrics there. Um, and they're very, because it's a training hospital, they are very committed to training all kinds of disciplines, including social workers. In fact, there will be a number of other social work students placed at St. Vincent's while you were there um, from other universities, including ACU. It is the major public hospital in Sydney. It's very, very busy, a lot going on there. Um, if you're interested in learning more about St. Vincent's, you could uh, click on this link here and it would show you more about this agency. 
Another field placement option is through um, their Catholic education school system, which is sort of a semi-private, semi-public school system. This is an option for a direct practice student where you would be participating um, really as a traditional school social worker. School social work there looks very similar to how it looks here. Um, the, Possibility is there for working in elementary, middle, or high school settings, and they have very much sort of a whole school or whole child approach or philosophy in thinking about school social work. And you, as I said, you would have the opportunity to work with a range of diverse students and ages. Um, the final possibility for a field placement is an agency called Catholic Care. This is actually an opportunity for a direct practice student or a macro practice student who's interested in working in program development and evaluation. It is a large family sort of community focused organization that provides a wide range of services from family and individual counseling, disability services, senior services, um, working with parents, working with seniors, people who have individuals who have disabilities, child and youth services, addictions, and mental health. So clearly you couldn't do all of that when you were there. And so what we would want to do is understand what of the areas you're primarily interested in, and then we would match you with a field instructor in the agency who is working in that area. If you're interested in learning more about Catholic care, um, the link is there. So one other thing that I want to mention that I think may be a possibility, it's something that I'm working on now, is um, there, the ACU does have sponsored field placements in the outback of um, Australia, which um, is very, very rural, of course. Working in this field placement, you would have the opportunity to work with um, a wide uh, number of indigenous people. Um, the field placement there is in a school setting. Um, so this is something actually, if you're interested in not being located in Sydney in the city, but you'd really like an experience in the rural area, it's something that I can pursue um, further for you and I think is likely to be a possibility. So, um, what kind of student, what are the eligibility criteria that we're thinking about for this program? So, the first thing is you must be a UNC um, specialization year MSW student. We don't provide this opportunity for students who are in their generalist year. And if you're a direct practice student, you have to be interested in health care, school social work, or family care because the agencies that you would be matched with. And if you're a macro practice um, specialization student, you have to be interested in program development and evaluation. And one of the things that's really important to us as a school is um, that a frame that you think about is that you're really an ambassador for the UNC School of Social Work. This is a new program for us that we put a um, great deal of consideration and work into with our university partner there. And so it's really important that whatever student we send, that you think about uh, sort of spreading goodwill and representing our school well when you're working in the community with the agency, when you're meeting with ACU students and faculty. Um, we're really interested in um, students who understand that this is a new program, students who have flexibility and an ability to adapt as we learn and grow with the program, and students who are primarily interested in an international experience. Um, I found that students who have um, sort of a very specific idea of the kind of field placement setting um, and experiences that they're expecting may not work as well in an international setting. Um, you're a long way away from here. You're working with another school. You're working with another culture. You're working with policies and procedures that are different than the U.S. And so it's really important that students be open to that experience and sort of um, go into the thinking about it with a very open mind. Um, and definitely we're looking for students who have an interesting capacity in working in an international setting. So, what's the timeline? There is a lot to do for any student who is considering any international experience. Um, and I put 
much of the sort of things to be thinking about, which if you were accepted into this program, I would be um, walking you through. But I think it is important for folks to know that there are a lot of pieces and parts um, to having everything accepted and in place so that you, you can do a community-based experience. So the applications for this program are going to open on November 1st. And this you'll apply through the heels abroad.unc.edu website by searching for Australia. And you'll see it pop up, and it says Australian Catholic University Social Work. And that's where the application is going to be housed. Um, and the, so it'll open up on November 1st, and then the deadline is November 22nd. So this is actually before many of your colleagues are really even beginning to think about their field placement for next year. But because this experience starts in July and there are so many pieces and parts that need to be put in place, it's really important that we start much earlier and you would decide much earlier that this is something that for sure that you want to do. So applicants, um, applications will be due on November 22nd and then I'll set up a meeting with all of the applicants prior to winter break just to talk you through, again, this is what we're doing, are you sure this is what you want, what are you interested in, tell me more about um, which field placements, your career goals, those kinds of things so that we can appropriately think about your application and also which agency would be the best match for you. And then two students will be selected for phase one of the interview process sometime over the holidays. Then there's a gap, you see, and I wish that gap wasn't there, but um, because our university is closed until the end of the first week of January, but ACU is actually closed until um, the last week in January, so there's a gap here in our ability to move forward. Um, so late January, early February, um, the, the two students that we select will be interviewed by the Australian Catholic University faculty and by the agency. No application is considered absolutely complete until we make sure that our um, university partners and our agency partners in Australia are all in board with the um, choice. And then by February 14th, two students will be accepted for the program. So you would know um, in mid-February that you've been accepted. You would have had your interviews. Um, the applications would have been submitted. Everything would be um, in place. And um, so then, what happens is you would get an acceptance letter from UNC and an acceptance letter from ACU. And you actually have to apply to ACU through the study abroad office. Um, there are some contracts and things that need to be signed. Um, there is a stipend contract. I'll tell you about the stipend that we are providing students um, with this program. There's a study abroad contract. There are various things that need to be put in place. And then also you would want to complete the financial aid for study abroad form here at UNC if you're interested um, in seeing if um, there's more financial aid that you could get to participate in the program. Um, you're also responsible for arranging for your housing in Sydney. I'll talk about that again in a little bit to tell you what the options are. And then, of course, you have to you have to have a passport already. And but Australian uh, Travelers to Australia must have a visa, and students have to apply for the Australian student visa. In April, you would attend a UNC pre-departure conference over at Global, and around the same time, you'd also be arranging for your flight. And we do recommend that you get fully refundable airline tickets or trip cancellation insurance, just, just to be on the safe side if anything that um, unexpected happened. And then there's also New South Wales onboarding requirements. Those are things like criminal records checks and various other things. I actually have a slide about that. Um, I'll go into more specifics. So um, the deadlines for these haven't been set yet. We're still pretty far away for them, but approximately you would need to be in Australia around the end of July, on July 25th, so that you can, uh, you can attend the international student orientation. In that orientation, you'd also have the opportunity to meet other international students who are studying in Sydney. And then there is also a social work orientation where you'd be meeting with social work faculty and they'd be talking with you about social work services 
campus in Australia. Um, then there's a couple of weeks where there actually is some free time and some things that you need to do. You know, we really want to make sure this students can get settled in their housing, that they understand their community, that you learn the transportation system in Sydney. So we don't want to throw you right in the agency first thing. But there's also requirements that cannot be completed until you arrive in Australia. And it takes a couple of weeks to get all of those paperwork and things done so that you can start your field placement. We anticipate the field placement would start about August 15th and that you would be in that field placement really around until the end of the first week in December. Classes actually end here around December 3rd and we would want you to be wrapping up there and then thinking about um, coming home. So what are some of those onboarding requirements that um, ACU and New, now New South Wales require is a criminal records check both in the US and Australia, a central registry check both in the US and Australia, first aid and CPR training, which you actually complete in Australia according to their standards. That's one of the things you would do in those first two weeks. Something called a hand hygiene certificate is completed in Australia. I believe that's an online training actually about washing your hands, particularly important um, in hospital settings. You have to provide documentation that you have all the required immunizations, and then you also need to have a TB screening upon arrival. So where would you live? So international students are guaranteed on campus housing. If that's something that you want, of course, you have to pay for it as a student of ACU. And they have a range of options that are available from dorm type living to more apartment type living. They also um, have a number of options if you want to arrange for your own housing. There are vendors that they work with, that they partner with, where you would live more um, in the city of Sydney. You could also look for your own housing. There's actually a website that um, is provided and a contact. You would have a contact person at ACU that would help you think about your housing options. A couple other pieces that I just wanted to mention is um, professional liability insurance is, is provided by both universities since you registered at both. You're provided with professional liability insurance at both. And you are required to have the Australian student health insurance, which is called overseas student health coverage, and you're required to have the Geo Blue um, UNC health insurance policy as well. So you're sort of very duly covered in terms of health insurance. So what is the budget? Um, I uh, on the website uh, you can you'll have there's a link where you can click on the on the. Um, more expanded budget for um, the program. I want to start out by seeing, saying our dean has very generously provided a $5,000 stipend for students who want to participate in the program. And I anticipate that that would cover roughly half of your expenses. Um, as I have done the budget, and you can see a, a line item budget, if you look on the, um, click on the budget link, you can see that the expenses really range for range from about $7,500 to about $1,200 with the variability really being what housing option you decide to choose. If you decide to choose something much less expensive, of course, your overall costs are going to be reduced. If you want to do um, apartment living or something that is a little fancier, then it's going to be um, more expensive, but I'm happy to talk with you more about that individually if you have questions about what you could anticipate with the budget. So if you need more information about this, of course, I'm the person, I'm the program coordinator. Um, this is one of the direct responsibilities that I care within the, carry within the field education program. Best way to reach me is my email address, and um, I'm happy to set up a time with you if you'd like to learn more. So if you're interested, certainly come and talk to me. Um, if you've already attended an orientation session, you may not have additional questions. But I really do recommend that as next steps for students who are considering um, this program is that you meet with your plan of study advisor to think about possible scenarios 
for your specialization year coursework. You would be in Sydney um, for the fall semester, which means that you would be missing some of the course options that are offered here in the fall. So that's something I think really to think through for yourselves. Um, what courses are available in the fall? What courses are available in the spring? What would your overall plan of study look like if you participated in this block placement um, in Sydney? And what are some of the pros and cons for you as a student? Certainly you want to be reviewing the budget that's linked on the website and thinking about, you know, finances and how you will put those funds together so that you could go. And then lastly, if you're interested in participating, you would want to submit your application by November 22nd. So that's really it. Um, I'm really excited about this program. I've come to um, really develop a love for Australia and the people there. Um, Sydney is a very multicultural um, city with um, all different types of people there, a range of social problems. I think that you would have a very rich experience there, and it's definitely something that I'm interested in helping you and supporting you and thinking about. So please get in touch with me if you're interested.